اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نو ستارت 4.2 بس بون سرول سير من مين بعد ثيرم وات ار ذيس تو ثيرمز سو ستارت وذ ذا رول سير سيز وات لوك ات ذا كونديشنز اوف رول سير اف از كونتينوس ان ذا كلوز انترفال ديفرنشبل ان ذا اوبن انترفال اف اوف اي ايكوال اف اوف بي then there is at least one number c in a b c belongs to the interval a b such that f prime as c equal zero you can think of it this way if you have a function doing like this where f of a equals f of b there is a must a constant c this is a this is n b there is a c says that f prime at c equals zero. This is what you're missing. Okay. Let us do examples and then do all the examples questions. Okay. Do it for examples, then we'll do all these. Okay. Find the two x intercept of this function. Actually, what is the idea? He wants you to find f of a equal f of b. So when f of a equal f of b equal zero. So in this case, I'm sure that they are equal. I don't care. They are equal to zero. They are equal to other value for Rhodes theorem. But this is because of that. He asked you about two x-intercept. Two x-intercept. I just find. I make this, which is x minus two times x minus one equal to zero. So for sure, the x-intercepts are x equal to or x equal one. So I have the point two and zero, or one and zero, which is the x-intercept. Okay. Now, so I have f of a, and this is this is a, and th this is a, and this is b. Okay. So if we look at the function, f of x, which is this one, is continuous on this closed interval. Actually, it's continuous everywhere, but just to apply the theorem. And then f of x is differentiable. Actually, differentiable everywhere, but I'm concerned only about the open interval, 1, 2, 2. And f of 1 equals f of 2. They are equal to 0, so I don't care about that. These three conditions implies what? There exists c belongs to 1 and 2, says so that f prime at c equals 0. Let us check. Do you have that or not? The function is easy, so f prime will be what? 2x minus 3, make it equal to 0. I have x equal 3 over 2, which is in the interval, 1 and 2. So, yes, so my c is 3 over 2. That will be my c satisfying the role still. So the function satisfy these three conditions, continuous in the closed interval, differential in the open interval, and the endpoints, they are equal to each other, f of 1 equal f of 2, then there exists a c, at least one c, maybe more says that f prime at c equal zero. And this is, we, we, we prove it here. Okay, find all c satisfying the f prime at c, which is satisfying the Rolle's theorem, actually. Since f is continuous in this interval, and f is differentiable in the open interval, as as continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere. And f of minus two, f of minus 2 will be what 16 minus 2 times 2 square minus 8 which is 8 and f of 2 it will be the same since i have x square and x to the power 4 so minus or plus one will not be affected so so conditions of all theorems these are the conditions of all theorem conditions implies what there exist at least one C. At least one C where? In the interval minus two and two in the open interval. So it's that F prime at C equals zero. Yeah. So it's that F prime at C equals zero. So let me find F prime at C. That will be what? 4x cubed minus 4x. Which is what? I can take 4x common factor. I have x squared minus 1. Which is 4x. x minus 1. x plus 1. 
make it equal to zero. So you have x equal zero. Is it in the interval? Yes. So that will be one C. Another C, x equal one. Is it in the interval? Yes. So this is C also. X equal minus one. Is it in the interval? Yes. So I have how many C's? I have three C's. The theorem is saying there is at least one. That's it. Let me take another function. First, the function is continuous in the closed interval, which is very clear. Second, f is differentiable on the open interval. Actually, this function is a polynomial, so continuous and differentiable everywhere. f at zero will be two. f of three, be careful now, 27 minus three squared, which is nine, six times three, which is 18 plus two. That is minus 27, that will be two. So they are equal. So rule theorem condition satisfied. Here say rule theorem conditions. Okay, we are okay with this. So now that means what? There exists a C in this interval between zero and three, at least one, that F prime at C equals zero. So let's find F prime at C. The prime at x. So that will be what? 3x squared minus 2x, right? Minus 6. Make it equal to 0 to find the c's. So I have 3x, you know, x. Yeah, I need the sec. Yeah, is that correct the calculation? Yeah, 3x squared minus 2x minus 6. Hmm. I cannot factor it. So what shall I do? I can solve it as as uh, quad using the quadratic formula. So I have what x equal minus b, which is two plus or minus square root b square, which is four minus four three times minus six over three times two, which is six. Okay, and that will be two plus or minus what? 4 times 3 is 12 times minus 6, that will be minus 72 with the minus, so it will be square root of 76 over 6. Uh -huh. So that will be 76 is what? It's 4 times 19, so that will be 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 19 over 6. So you have 1 plus or minus square root of 19 over 3. Okay. So now, does that mean these are my C's? No. To be careful, I need it to be in the interval. So check C1, which is one, or well, let me say X1. I call it C when it is satisfying the condition. One plus the square root of 19 over three. And X2, one minus the square root of 19 over three. Okay. One the square root of 19 is what? It's something like four point something, huh? 5 over 3, this is still, yeah, this is correct. So I have C1 is 1 plus the square root of 19 over 3. This is my first C. This one, this is 4 point some. So minus 4, this will be negative. So it's not in the interval. So this one rejected. So how many C's we have? Only one C in this case, in this example. Okay, now we'll work with other functions. Now, like what we did before, yeah, now, now we'll work with other functions. Now, let me say sine 2 by x. Yeah, this is continuous, actually continuous everywhere, and differentiable, actually differentiable everywhere. Now, check f of minus 1, that will be what? Sine, sine minus 2 by, which is sine, which is 0, and f of 1, sine 2 by which is 0, so they are equal. So it's the rule theorem, conditions are satisfied. They are OK. That means what? There exists at least one C. Look to this interval such that F prime at C equals 0. OK, now let me find F prime. What will be F prime? That will be 2 pi cosine 2 by x. I want this to be equal to 0. Uh -huh. Be careful now with the calculation. When this, this is, will not affect anything. This, I need this argument to be, 
when cosine is zero, which is pi over two plus n pi. Okay. So now let me divide by, yeah, pi over two plus plus pi or minus pi in, in both in both ways. All this cosine will be will be zero where n is zero plus or minus one plus or minus two and so on. Where n is an integer. So x will be what I just divide by two pi. I get what multiply by one over two pi. So that will be pi that will be one over four actually. Pi will be cancelled. So I have one over four plus n equal two. Mm -hmm. I want it to be in this interval. So I check. Now let me do the check here. Yeah. If n equals zero, if n equals zero, let me put n equals zero here. n equals zero, what will be x? One over four. Is it in the interval? Yes. So this is my one c. If n equal one, the next is what? One over four plus half, which is three over four, is still in the interval. If n equal two, that will be one over four plus one. It's not in the interval. And for sure, all these will not be in the interval. Now go back, n equal minus one. X will be one over four minus half, which is minus one over four. That in the interval, n equal minus two, that X equal what? Yeah, I need more space. X equal one over four minus one, which is minus three over four, which is the interval. But if n equal minus three, X will be what? 1 over 4 minus 3 over 2, which is minus 5 over 4, which is not in the interval. And for sure, the, all, all the ones. So the ones which are okay, these are what? This one, this one, this one, and this one. This is the only four. So I have C1 minus 3 over 4, C2 minus 1 over 4, C3, 1 over 4, C4, 3 over 4. He want the sum, he want the product, he want anything, I can't do the calculation. Okay. Yeah, that's mainly the idea. So don't expect only one C, sometimes you'll get more. Let f x equal x is minus 2. I have f of minus 1 equal of 1. f of minus 1 will be 1, and f of 1 equals 1. Is there a C? says that f prime at c, what is f prime at c? That will be minus two over x cube. Would that never be zero? Oh, so it does, that, does that mean there's a problem in the in the theorem? No, the conditions are not satisfying. There's only one condition. We notice that f is not continuous at x equals zero, which is part of the interval. And they have to be continuous in the closed term, so x equals zero, and it's not differentiable actually. So, Rolle's theorem's conditions are not satisfied. So, we cannot conclude the, the, the value of c for which satisfies the Rolle's theorem. So, if the function very clearly is continuous, is differentiable, we have no problem. What about if a zero? is zero f of two four minus which is zero okay so there exists a c so i need to find f prime at x product rule i have two x minus two e to the power x plus yeah two x plus x square minus two x e to the power x so i have two x minus two plus x square minus two x times e to the power x so I have what? Yeah, this cancelled. So I have x squared minus 2 e to the power x, make it equal to 0. This is never 0. So I have x squared equal 2. So I have x equal either square root of 2 or minus square root of 2. Don't forget, in the Rolle theorem, I need c belongs to the interval 0 and 2. So this is rejected. I have only this one. So my c will be square root of 2, which is this one. The value of C is why the Rolle theorem and apply to this over this interval. Yeah, it's just a polynomial, so you have nothing to worry about. Okay, so a continuous differentiable and f of minus three will be what? Zero. 
and f of two also will be zero. Yeah, this is make it. This is make it zero. Okay. So f prime at x will be what derivative of the first times the second minus the first derivative of the second, which is two x plus three. Now I can take x plus three common factor. The remaining is what? I have x plus three minus two x minus two. That will be x plus three times what? I have x minus two x. That will be minus x. Three plus four, which is plus. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is plus, not minus, sorry, 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 sorry. Product rule, yeah, this is a product rule, it's plus. So I have x plus three, I have x plus three plus two, x minus two. So I have x plus three x, that will be three x. Three minus two, that will be minus one. So I want this to be equal to zero. So I have x equal minus three, or x equal one over three. This is, yeah, it's at the end point, but the Rolle's theorem says C belongs to the end open interval. So this is, does not belong to the open interval minus three and two. So this is rejected. This one is okay. So I have my C will be one over three, not minus three. This is wrong. I have this. this and this is, I need C to be in the open interval. Yeah, be careful about these things. Okay. If the graph of x intersects the x-axis at a and b, okay, where a is less than b, and if c is the value between satisfying the Rolle theorem, so it means f prime at c equals zero, okay, then find a plus b plus c. The, this actually it's, it's similar to this question somehow, where you need to find the x-intercept and then show that f prime equals zero at the zero between these two values between a and b. At the C between zero or between A and B. Okay, so I have I need to check the x-intercept. The intersect the x-axis means the x-intercept. Okay, so I have a x equal zero, which is x squared minus x minus two, which is x minus two times x plus one. So I have x equal two or x equal, sorry, or x equal minus one. Which one is bigger? This is A and this is. B. I need A to be less than B. So, so the function is continuous, differentiable, so road series are satisfied. So now to check F prime at X. A prime at X will be what? 2X minus 1. Make it equal to 0, so I have X equal half, which is belongs to the interval minus 2, minus half and 1. So this is will be what? It's my C. And they want A plus B plus C, which minus 1 plus two plus half. This is five over two minus one, which is three over two. Actually one plus half, which is three over two. And that will be my answer. Okay. State Y Rod theorem does not apply to this function and this interval. Okay. I need to check the definition, I mean the conditions for Rod theorem. First, if it's continuous, yes. We have no problem with this in the open interval. Ah, find f prime. F prime will be what? Minus two over three, X is minus one over three. So F is not differentiable at X equals zero, which is inside this open interval. But also check F of one, F of one will be zero and F of minus one equals zero. So the only condition not satisfied that F is not differentiable. So this is wrong, it's not defined, no, it's defined. If it's one, no, they are equal. Is it, if it's constant, no, it's not constant. Okay. <laughs> Which one of the following functions can a Carlos theorem be applied to? Yeah. Okay. In this interval, minus one and one. Let me go backwards and this is the answer. This one, I know that F prime, we did something similar, minus two over three, x is minus one over three. So f is not differentiable at zero, which is in this interval. Okay, this one is not continuous at zero. f is not continuous at zero. 
Pitch belongs to the interval. Actually, to the close interval. This one, the problem is that f of one, f of minus one will be three. But f of one equal absolute value of minus one. Or so they're not equal. This one, f is not differentiable at zero. Which part of this interval? Open it down. Minus one. This one, if it's continuous, actually continuous everywhere, and if it's differentiable, and open it. And f of minus one will be equal to f of one, since sine by sine minus by all all are zeros. So nothing to worry about. So this is the correct answer. Which one of the following statement is true? Assume f and g are differentiable functions. Yeah, I'm looking just about the statement which is related to our things because these, these I think they are not. Yeah, f has at least one critical number. No, function is differentiable. It doesn't mean it's it has a critical number. Like if of x equal x cubed has no critical numbers. It's differentiable. Everything is okay. So this is wrong. This is our wrong store. This is yeah. Mean by it here somehow, but this is inflection point 4.4. 4. If prime equals zero, then if has a local maximum, local minimum. No, if x cube, x cube, I have 3x squared is equal to zero. So if prime equal to zero at x equals zero, but I have no local maximum, no, no, neither local minimum at x equals zero. If you look at the graph of x cubed, so there is no local maximum, local minimum. The opposite is correct. The opposite is correct. Yeah, this direction is correct, but this way is not. Yeah, if the function is differentiable, means it's continuous. So the conditions of all theorems satisfied, especially f of inverse, f of minus one is equal to f of one. So that means what? There exists c in this interval, minus one and one, such that f prime such that f prime at c equals zero. What's the meaning of this? Means c between minus one and one means absolute value of c less than one. So this is the, the statement. So this is correct. Question of the following is false. This is false. I say this is cannot be the other way. This is correct. And this is we just show it's correct. These are not yeah, are not related to rows here. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. This for sure, this is 4.3. So I just am concerned about these three. Okay. Yeah, I think I will stop uh, the recording. These are a little bit hard questions about uh, role theory. So I will do, I will do them later. So let me stop the recording, then I will do the main value here. I don't like to have long video. Uh, it's not that long. You know what? Let me go back and do 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 the remaining. Yeah. Okay. This one is a little bit complicated. You need to be careful. Yeah. He says what? If it's a, a function that is twice differentiable, so it's differentiable and continuous, everything is okay. And I have f of a one equal f of a two equal to f of a three. So I have. I have here a1, here a2, uh, let me, and yeah, and a3. All of them, they are equal to each other. So if I apply rules here to these two between a1 and a2, since they are equal, the function is differentiable, continuous, then there exists a c in this interval between a1 and a2 such that f prime at c equal zero, a prime at C1, let me say. Now between A2 and A3, between A2 and A3, there exists, well, this C1, there exists C2, belongs to the interval A1 and A2, says that F prime at C2 equals zero. Okay. Now, if you consider now C1 and C2, these are this is still between this interval between A1 and A3. 
So if you take C1 and C2, C1 and C2, and since the function is twice differentiable, so f double prime also exists. So f prime, if I take the function g of x, which is f prime of x. So this function is continuous and differentiable. He says it's twice differentiable, so it's, it's continuous and differentiable. Not only that, f prime or g at c1 would be equal g at c2 equal 0. So these are equal to 0. Okay, so that means Rod here is saying what? There exists C3 belongs to the interval C1 and C2 such that F prime, F, F prime prime, G prime, let me say, G prime at C3. What is G prime? G is F prime, F, what that means? F double prime at C3 equal to zero. Okay, so here I have C1 critical number. And I have also here C2. Yeah, let me, yeah. Let me call this one, call this two, call this three. Okay, so from one, C1 is a critical number for F. From two, C2 is a critical number or F2. 3, C3 is a critical number for G, which is F prime. Good. Because of that, I have two critical numbers for F and one critical number for F prime. So I say F has at most one critical number and F prime has at most at least one critical number. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, no, we cannot say this. We cannot say at most, at least. No, we say we must have say at least two critical number, because I have a prime at c one equal zero. I cannot say at most. It should be at least. No, when I say prime at c one equal zero, this maybe I have more than one, because that at least one crit two critical numbers for f, and at least one critical number for f prime. Please be careful the same. I cannot say at most one. Uh, or at most two, no, yeah. So that will be my my correct answer. You know that the critical numbers they are not only one. When I say a prime at c one equals zero, I don't have only one c. Maybe we have more, and maybe we have only one. So because of that I say at least for sure I have two critical numbers. C one cannot be equal to c two because c two in this interval and c one interval and they are different. A one and a two. Yeah, assume they are different. This done, they are uh, yeah in this order, but for sure they are they are three different values. Okay. Yeah, the remaining this this question. Yeah, let me do this. If we say three x three x intercept, if we say three x intercept. It means there is f prime equal zero and f prime equal zero. Then f must have at least two points in which the tangent line is horizontal, the derivative equal to zero. But this is not true. This is not true. Why? Because I need the f to be continuous in a closed interval and differentiable in the open interval. I need these conditions. Yeah, they, they are equal, yes, to each other, but this is missing, the condition to be continuous and differentiable. In this problem, the condition is there. So we can do this. Now let me finish my question. Yeah, they said the equation has exactly one real root and the same thing. This the number of root of this equation. It should be one. Yeah. I know that the intermediate value theorem tells me there is a root if one is positive and the other one is negative. If we take this function, x to the power five plus ten x plus three. Now it will be f at zero. It will be three. Yeah. If at minus one, it will be what? It will be minus one, minus 10 plus three, which is negative. So there is at least, there is at least one root between 
minus one and zero. Okay. Okay. Now, now we'll try to do. I want to prove there is exactly one one real root. We want to prove. There is exactly one real root. Okay. Yeah, what I will do, I will assume I have more than one, and then I will get the contradiction with the rules here. Assume we have more than, assume we have two. Call them F. Two roots at a1 equals zero and f at a2 equals zero. The function is continuous and differentiable. So Rolle's theorem condition satisfies. Rolle's theorem conditions satisfy by this assumption, and we have two roots. So I should have there exist a c between a1 and a2, which is between minus one and zero, such that f prime at c equals zero but if we do f prime what will be f prime of x that will be 5x to the power 4 plus 10 which is impossible to be zero so there is a contradiction now i cannot find c satisfying this it means this assumption is wrong i cannot have more than one so the only possibility there they have only one layer roots so this is the only answer. And the same thing for this one. I have e to the power x equals 3 minus 2x, or I can make it e to the power x plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So this is my function. Okay. I can check. This is my function. Yeah, intermediate value theorem. Oh, he said between 0 and 1. So I check between f and 0. f at 0 will be what? 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, negative. And f at 1 will be what? e plus 2 minus 3, which is positive. This is negative. This is positive. So there exists at least one root. The same idea. At least one root. How? What real root? Yeah. How to be sure it's exactly one? I will use the... This intermediate right? I will use the rules here. I will use the same trick. Assume I have two. But if you look at f prime, that will be what? e to the power x plus 2, which is impossible to be 0. So Rolle's theorem cannot be wrong. So it means I cannot have 2. So the only possibility, there is exactly one real root. Yeah. Which is yeah, you know, which is now will end it. Okay, then I will go to the mean value theory. Maybe I will do one one problem before I go to the mean value theory. Let me stop the recording. Yeah. Where is the recording? Yeah, recording is here. Yes, thank you. <laughs>